Hello everyone and welcome to the 13th International Blueberry Seminar organized by Blueberry Consulting. For the first time in Madrid, we are gathering some of the most relevant professionals in the blueberry industry. I'm here today with Chad Finn. Welcome. Thank you. And well, I wanted to ask you, how do you see the development of the different blueberry varieties in the US and the rest of the world? I think one of the things we see constantly, it's very dynamic. We have new regions of the world that are coming into production, whether it was 15 years ago with parts of southern Spain or now in Peru, or as we expand production areas further north. And as we move into all these different environments, we need varieties that are adapted to perform in those environments. We also are faced with the consumer having much higher demands for fruit quality. They want better flavor, a good crunch to the berry, and so we need to deliver those to them every day. And so whether it's the breeding programs developing varieties, the growers growing them well, or the packers and processors delivering them to the consumer, all of those are constantly improving and always need new varieties. Okay, okay. And what is still missing to develop the perfect blueberry? There's no such thing as the perfect berry. There is always, we're always striving for better. Some things that might have been important 20 years ago are not as important today. I think some of the traits that we see that are, have risen in importance is uh, pleasant firmness. We want something that pops in our mouth, sort of like a cherry or a grape. We don't want mushy, but we also don't want chewy. So how do you get that good firmness that ships with very good quality to the consumer and that they enjoy? So we're constantly looking at new traits, and there's never going to be a perfect blueberry because we need high yields for the growers, but we need per perfect quality for the consumers. And where do those two meet is never yes, exactly it's constant, perfect. It's constant development. It's always balanced. Okay. How how can biotechnology accelerate the genetic the genetic improvement of the blueberries? Well, I guess that's what we're really learning right now. It's uh, to this point it hasn't, um, but we are learning. You know, there's not a great deal of uh, interest in genetically modified blueberries, but there is interest in how can we find blueberries faster that have the traits of interest. There are some traits, like we talk a lot about chilling requirement, which is the amount of cold they need in the winter to break bud. In, in Peru, they have no the chilling, so they need varieties that will still flower with no chilling. In Oregon, where I'm from, we have hundreds of hours of chilling, so that's very different, and yet that's a trait, that chilling requirement trait, is, is you can't just see it by looking at the plant. You have to put the plant in all these different environments which is very expensive. Uh -huh. If we could find tools for us to say, using genetic DNA, DNA uh, analysis and say, these plants have no chilling requirement, these plants have high chilling requirement, and then only put those different plants where they will do well, we can make progress in breeding much more quickly. So that's where we see the use of these tools, is to help us as breeders make progress more quickly and identify the ones that everyone, whether you're a consumer or a producer, is going to find more valuable. Yeah, that's, great. That's, that's great. Thank you for the interview and thank you for your time, everyone. We will be doing more interviews with other participants, so stay tuned.